Last month, Orlando rapper Glock9 was involved in a Florida State RICO case, in addition to the five additional attempted murder charges the rapper is currently facing. Smith, who faces an attempted murder charge for a separate drive-by shooting, denied any involvement in a gang during our phone call this week. But earlier this month, the Orange County Sheriff's Office announced a major gang investigation called Operation X-Force, which led to 34 people being hit with state RICO cases. The charges come after a nine-month investigation the police had done into the ongoing war between Glock 9's crew, AFNF, and 438, a gang affiliated with rapper Hot Boy. It was already announced that Glock would face state RICO charges, but now Hot Boy is wanted as well and is currently on the run from law enforcement. Let's take a closer look at this beef and the investigation. Deadly war between 438 and AFNF has been going on for a minute, with both sides losing members and multiple innocent bystanders catching strays. The beef has gotten so violent that it's already been covered by the local news channel and police announced months ago that they were launching an investigation into the war between the two gangs. On July 2nd, the Orange County Sheriff's Office announced the results of their investigation in a huge RICO indictment of members of both AFNF and 438 as well as other local neighborhood gangs. The investigation was conducted in partnership with other federal agencies including the FBI and ATF. The sheriff leading the press conference who were responsible for over 200 felony charges, which included 30-plus shootings and several homicides. Among those eight men listed were rappers Hot Boy and Glock 9. The sheriff mentioned Glock 9 specifically and said that he alone was facing 52 felony charges. He also mentioned that when police searched his house, they found 13 auto sears, a device used to turn a regular handgun or rifle into an automatic weapon. According to the sheriff, the ability to convert a regular gun into an automatic greatly increases the chances that innocent bystanders are going to get hit by a stray bullet because the shooter has far less control over where all the shots are going. He points to four homicides of innocent bystanders who are believed to have been casualties in this gang war, including 14-year-old Joshua Atkinson and 3-year-old Dequayne Felix Jr., whose murders remained unsolved. Joshua Atkinson and another teenager were both shot back in September 2020 while sitting on the porch of a house in the Pine Hills neighborhood of Orlando. The other victim was critically injured but survived while Joshua passed away from his injuries. The killers were never caught, but police believe that the shooting was tied to this beef. Dequayne Felix Jr. was killed just a few days later inside his home on Drexel Lab, also in the Pine Hills neighborhood. Shots were fired into the home, hitting and killing Dequayne, who was only three years old. Police believe that several 438 members lived in the residence, which is why he got targeted, and the toddler was just another casualty. They originally offered $20,000 for any information on the murder, but that case also remains unsolved. In addition to both of these murders, police believe that two other innocent bystanders were killed as a result of this beef, including a Koei football star Dexter Rance and 16-year-old Taviah King. Dexter Rance was attending the memorial service for Wolf Luma, an associate of Hot Boy who was killed by AFN of Meat Mo, who was friends with Glock 9. The memorial service was allegedly shot up in retaliation for Meat Mo's arrest. Rance was sitting in a car about to drive away from the scene when bullets started flying. He got hit several times and passed away while going to the hospital. Rents was a promising wide receiver who had scored 15 touchdowns and ran up almost 2,000 yards in his football career at a Kobe High. He had committed to playing at the University of Louisville the following year and was only one month away from leaving home when he was shot and killed. His death shocked the community because he was not affiliated with either gang but was simply paying respect to his friend Wolf who was also killed in this deadly war. Tobiah King was a 16-year-old girl who got caught in the crossfire of a gang shooting back in May 2021. Tobiah and her friend were waiting to be picked up after a night out when her friend's brother drove by and offered them a ride. While he was on the way to drop them off, another vehicle pulled up alongside him and started shooting. Tobiah was hit and brought to the hospital where she later died from her injuries. Tavia happened to be the niece of Regina Hill, Orlando's police commissioner, who shared a post on Facebook after her death claiming Tavia was an honor student who wanted to become a veterinarian. Police later arrested two suspects for the murder, Anthony Barnes and Jacaria Simpson, and at the recent press conference, one of the officers conducting the investigation announced they had arrested a third suspect as well. Press conference also revealed that several of the men wanted in the investigation are still in demand, including Hot Boy, who's currently on the run. Hot Boy is being charged with one count of racketeering and one count of conspiracy to commit racketeering. Racketeering refers to a broad range of crimes that include murder, kidnapping, extortion, drug crimes, and even gambling. We've seen the feds hit popular rappers affiliated with the streets with these kinds of charges before, including Bobby Schmurder, Casanova, and YFN Lucci, so it's nothing new. The RICO Act was created to convict mob bosses of crimes committed by people under them. More recently, it's been used to convict large national gangs and now smaller neighborhood gangs for creating illegal criminal organizations that profit from acts of violence. 
That way, they can pin the most popular rapper as the ringleader of the group and convict them of the crimes committed by their affiliates that they may or may not have participated in. Conspiracy is just an agreement between two parties to commit a crime in the future. So all they have to do is prove that Hot Boy or Glock 9 knowingly participated and profited from a lifestyle that was fueled by crime to convict them of the charge. So far, this is just a state RICO case and has not been picked up by the federal court system. State cases have a lower conviction rate than Fed cases, so it may be a positive for Glock 9 and Hot Boy. Although, the fact that the Feds assisted in the investigation may mean that prosecutors have more than enough evidence to convict them. The investigation is still developing and many of the subjects are still on the run, including Hot Boy. It seems like only a matter of time before the rapper turns himself in, considering he's a pretty popular rapper at this point with a very distinct look. It would be tough for him to just flee the country and never return again, although anything is possible. Hopefully, he met with his attorneys and is preparing to turn himself in, because even if he beats the case, they'll likely be fighting it for a while. The wild thing is, before all the drama, Glock 9 and Hot Boy were cool. Way before they started terrorizing the city, they used to chill together and even recorded a song called Hooligans with LBP Pootie. Hot Boy started off in the streets and was locked up for breaking and entering back in 2016 and spent two years in the juvenile detention center. The rapper was making music since 7, started releasing music online with the help of his mother the same year he got locked up. While he was behind bars, he decided to take music more seriously and began to focus on his songwriting and rapping skills. But while he was in juvie, his former friend, Glock9, would start building a buzz of his own. His breakout track, Jail Hizzy Blues, debuted on Worldstar in 2018 and he followed up with tracks 10% and 223's featuring YNW Melly not long after. The rapper quickly signed a deal with Cash Money Records and even was compared to Kodak Black, the king of Florida rap. Many thought that Glock9 would be the next hot rapper out of Florida and for a while, he was on top of the world. But when his old friend Hot Boy was released from jail in 2018, he was determined to be the king of Orlando and things took a turn for the worse. Once free from jail, Hot Boy was quickly releasing singles like Life of a Dog and YG. But on April 20th, 2020, his close friend Wolf Luma was killed at a house party by AFNF Meatmo, which inspired his breakout single, Don't Need Time. The video was filmed at Wolf's funeral and ended up with more than 24 million views in the first few months. The track was so popular that it was remixed by one of the biggest rappers in the game, Lil Baby, and sent Hot Boy into the spotlight. But as both rappers were blowing up, Jealousy over success and anger from the recent deaths occurring on both sides will force them to get deeper and deeper into the beef. After unsuccessfully trying to get revenge on 438 at Wolf Luma's funeral and accidentally hitting Dexter Rents, AFNF would attempt a more targeted hit and go after Hot Boy's friend and right-hand man, Van Sean Sands. On July 7, 2020, a group of AFNF affiliates planned a drive-by shooting on the house where Sands was staying. Sands was armed at the time and started firing back, killing AFNF baby Joker. Even though police believe that the shooting was in self-defense, they still arrested Sands for possession of a firearm as a convicted felon. They ended up tracking him down and swarming him in a parking lot of a mall almost a month after the shooting. When police arrived, Sands immediately surrendered, but some of the people he was with took off running. One of those men was 22-year-old Salathus Melvin, who was chased and eventually shot by police, even though he wasn't guilty of anything. Melvin ended up dying from his injuries, which sparked accusations of police brutality as the shooting took place just a few months after the killing of George Floyd. Melvin was a friend of Hot Boy, and the video for the Don't Need Time remix featuring Lil Baby included news footage from the shooting and focused on the topic of police brutality. The rapper dropped his mixtape Cut the Fan On in May 2020 and has continued to collaborate with major artists in the game like Polo G and Future. Unlike his rival Glock 9, Hot Boy tried to keep a low profile and avoid getting himself involved in the beef. In an interview with DJ Vlad back in September 2020, the rapper denied that he even knew who Glock 9 was and there was no beef between them. And you kind of have these these beefs or, or whatever yeah. else and it's usually not based on shit. It's usually just based on competitiveness and people. Now, I ain't competing with nobody though. You want to know who I'm competing with? Let me really tell you who I'm competing with. Who's that? Deep down, don't tell nobody, okay? Don't tell nobody. I'm not going to tell anybody. This is between you and me and all the people that are watching. All right. I'm competing with myself. That doesn't mean he wasn't aware of what was going on in the streets, but it shows that he knew how to keep his mouth shut about beef and deal with the media. At this point, the rapper's strategy was working pretty well. He got out of Orlando and was focused on collaborating with all the hottest artists in the game and building a bigger name for himself than his rival. Even though Glock 9 blew up first, the rapper has slowly been losing momentum since he continued to get arrested for more and more serious charges. In 2018, he was arrested for Grand Theft Auto, possession of a concealed weapon, and drug charges. In 2019, he was arrested for marijuana and possession of an illegal firearm. 
Then, in 2020 and 2021, he was charged with multiple counts of first-degree murder that came from an incident where he shot up the house of his cousin, cut him Reese, while five of his family members were inside. Check out our full breakdown on the Glock 9 Rico case for more info on this charge. So, not only was he wasting time going in and out of jail when he could have been in the studio, but all those lawyer fees have to be hurt in his pockets. Although Glock 9 is a popular rapper, he's still building a name for himself and doesn't have a dedicated fan base that's gonna keep his name alive while he's fighting case after case. At the moment, the odds of Hot Boy beating the Rico case or at least copping a plea deal seem much better than Glock 9's. At this point, it doesn't seem like he actually participated in some of the more violent crimes committed by 438, he's just the biggest name associated with the gang, so he's being labeled as the leader. But it's not entirely clear what kind of evidence the police have against the rappers. Allegedly, there are hundreds of pages of arrest affidavits that are being withheld from the public because some of the suspects are still on the loose. While on the run, Hot Boy teased a song on his Instagram, captioned with some emojis that make him seem like he knows exactly what's coming. Most likely, he's just enjoying the last few days of freedom before turning himself in. This case is still developing, and more news is likely to come once Hot Boy surrenders and the court paperwork is made available to the public. With 34 people potentially going down from rival gangs, there is likely to be all kinds of allegations made and snitching going on that'll reveal what's really been happening in the streets of Orlando. Sadly, two more talented rappers are potentially risking their careers and freedom over a petty beef that could have been easily squashed. Florida police ain't playing around, and any Florida rapper who's really living that life should think again.